to this gathering of Annapolis EP. We're so glad that you're here with us this weekend. Would you please stand up and sing the Lord? Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Father, we have sought to do that even now. And I pray that those who may have come here distracted by sadness, even by broken hearts, those who've come with such joy that perhaps they're not yet 
aiming that joy and gratitude to you and, and all the rest of us somewhere in between will now be drawn by your spirit to grant you what you seek, worship in spirit as we come to know you in truth. Lord, would you take joy in what we sing through Christ, our mighty redeemer and our king.
Father, we sing of your goodness, of your great faithfulness to us, and how we thank you that even when we are faithless, you 
are faithful, for you cannot deny yourself. And so we seek to surrender all to you. We sing of it intentionally. We do confess that we over and again take back what, what we've sought to surrender. And how I thank you, Father, that it is your grace that makes us yours. It is your great love that desires us far more than we would ever begin to desire you. You are more willing to seek and save than we are to be found and saved. And so I pray that all throughout this room this morning and others throughout this entire world, whether people gather to worship you in glorious cathedrals and city churches or in storefronts or mud huts, would you, by the power of your spirit, be there seeking, saving, building up, calling to yourself, showing us the gifts that you've given to each of us, and then in your majestic love, unleashing us into this lost world that we may be the body of Christ through whom you seek and save the lost. I pray, Father, again, for those who may have come here with broken hearts, a family in distress, a loved one lost, a dream lying dead, all of the ways that life finally finds each one of us and breaks our hearts. And I pray that you in your grace will minister through your word to each and every broken heart in this place. And may we, as the body of Christ, have discernment to know those around us who need that word of encouragement, that embrace, that, that commitment to meet together. So may we be Christ's body. May we give you skin this day. And again, for those rejoicing, receive our praise. Thank you for the beautiful, glad, and happy times of life. And I pray that those celebrating new life, new dreams, new hopes, or just the, the joy of waking up on a beautiful day like this, will give all praise and glory to you. Father, we thank you for the opportunity this weekend to focus on what is your heart, what you have entrusted to us, your aim to reach those from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And so we thank you for each one of our mission partners able to be with us this morning. And we pray that they will find joy in worship. We pray for our brother Dan as he comes in a little bit to open your word to us. And I pray that he will find joy in being the vessel that you use to minister to us through the word. And we pray for every broken place throughout this world, whether the Middle East, which again is so filled with violence and threats of violence, or the border of Ukraine and Russia, inner cities of poverty and disease, and high rises with extraordinary wealth and extraordinary lostness. Would you? Seek and save the lost this day through us, your people. And now, Father, you know those things pressing in on us that no one else knows about. And in the silence, we would offer up to you the cries and whispers of our hearts. We lift these our morning prayers in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to try always truly to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. It is a joy to welcome you on this uh, mission conference weekend to this part of Christ Church. I failed to pray, but ask you to remember to pray for our battalion and uh, sons and dads as they're out on another of their adventures, uh, that this will be a missional weekend for them uh, as well. We do want especially to greet those of you with us, and I'm going to introduce you and as I introduce you, and hopefully your picture will be up here too, but would you just stand as I introduce you and turn and face the people. Um, Richard and Robin Crane, I hope these are the same order I gave them to you. Um, Joe and Beverly Fitzpatrick, Jacob and Pay Johnson, Dan and Janet McBride, Craig and, Craig and Marriott, and Mary Maria, forgive me, Craig and Maria Garriott, and Stan Long, Ryan Bratt and Amanda Giacana, Rich Hansen. Now, Satoshi and Kelly Hawachi will not be with us until tonight, but they will be here tonight. Our own Emily Andre and our speaker, Dan Iverson. We thank God for you and would show our appreciation to you now. Now, for those of you who signed, tonight's dinner is very early. It's here at 4.30, and uh, please be on time, because immediately following at 5.30 for everyone, don't have to be signed for this, uh, is our Mission Fest. And this is an opportunity for you to go uh, room to room and hear short 15 or 20 minute presentations by our missionaries. And if you choose to stay for the whole time, you can hear a whole number of, of people. But uh, you'll, get, uh, you'll get a little guide telling you what rooms that our people will be speaking in and what ministries they're involved in. And I hope that as many of you as possibly can will come. Uh, if you're sitting at home this afternoon in front of the television, um, I want to ask you, if you're a child of God, what's God's priority? <laughs> Whatever you're watching on TV or global mission, just, just say it, <laughs> just say it. Okay. Um, also, our, we just last month j decided that as a congregation, we would join our children in memorizing a verse together. And we read it to you and encouraged you to pick it up and said that we would remind you of it. I failed you, that's the last you heard of it. It's a new month, so I hope that you memorize that beautiful verse from Hebrews that speaks of Jesus as our great high priest. Our, our verse for this month, and you can pick these cards up, or if you have children in Sunday school, ask if you can see their card and learn it with them. I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Revelation 5.13. The reason for mission, as John Piper has so eloquently stated, is that God created us to worship him. And not all yet worship. So the work of global mission is to call those from every tribe and tongue and people and nation to join at last in this glorious worship of our great God and King. Let's now give back to God gladly, who always gives so graciously unto us. Let us receive the morning offering. I was buried in the
Our first scripture lesson is taken from the Psalter. It's Psalm 67. And I will invite you after I read this to do what I think is a very beautiful practice in some of the ancient churches of always following the Psalm reading with a stating of the Gloria Patri. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 67, may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. It is a joy to uh, introduce our speaker. We've already, uh, those of us, been attending some of the other events this weekend. We've already had the privilege of hearing Dan, Dan Iverson. Uh, many of you are former, or some presently still, uh, uh, officers in the military. And Dan is no stranger to your life. He was a Marine infantry officer and with reconnaissance as well. So he was uh, in the good preparation for global mission. Uh, he then went to one of the hardest fields uh, in mission as far as resistance to the gospel, and that's Japan. And he served 28 years in Japan, uh, pastoring, planting, and pastoring a church and providing leadership to other pastors in Tokyo, and then for the past 15 years has led the uh, PCA's Mission to the World effort in Japan. And uh, Dan, we're just glad that you're here. He's no stranger to this area or to the Naval Academy. So. <clears throat> Twenty-eight as a pastor and 15 as country director doesn't add up to 35. That's because there was a lot of overlap in there. So please turn to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. We'll be reading verses 1 through 10. Great missions passage. Luke chapter 19. Verses 1 through 10. It's a great joy to be with you. I think it's helpful. Who is this guy coming to preach for your missions conference? Uh, let me introduce myself. Take a minute to do that, if I could. Uh, I think I have some slides here. Here's what our family looked like as we... Uh, this is married. I was a Marine. My story is from mercenary to missionary, okay? <laughs> and uh, the next one... Uh, that's what we looked like when we went to Japan, and here's what we look like now, except there's six more grandchildren. So, you know, uh, we, uh, my wife and I, when they were young, 2 a.m. with a croupy baby with a fever. So you chant to me, then I'll chant to you. Children are a blessing. Okay, now I'll say it to you. Children are a blessing. And now at our family reunions, you know, we're like, whoa, children are a blessing. And, but we see our children chanting to their spouses, you know, it's hard. And what a blessing indeed. The Lord sent us to this big city, the largest city in the world, to Tokyo, to uh, the invitation of these three pastors, the next slide, who three Presbyterian pastors said, please send a team, PCA, to Japan to start a presbytery and to work with us to start a presbytery. I was the pastor of the fourth one and then our team and Korean missionaries, others. And by God's grace, a presbytery was born. You know, it was so exciting, so hard, so slow. And next one, please. Uh, 
Next slide, if we could. We'll, we'll, uh, that's that's who, what we've been doing for the last 35 years. And it's great to be with you all today. Let's uh, read Luke 19, verses 1 through 10. Uh, especially verse 10, the mission statement of Jesus, we might call it. Luke 19, 1 through 10. He entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Could we say that last verse together? I'll say it one more time. Then you repeat it after me, okay? For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, as we look at this familiar text, we pray, Lord, that you will open our hearts, fill us with your Holy Spirit. We pray that you will apply this wonderful text of you seeking lost people, seeking us, and calling us on mission with you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You know the, uh, this picture, who this person is on the slide? He led the attack on Pearl Harbor, uh, December 7th, 1941, woke up on his aircraft carrier, praying to his millions of Japanese gods that the ships would be in the harbor and that he could kill many Americans that day. Uh, the ships were in the harbor, thankfully not the aircraft carriers, and he killed more than... And uh, he, he led the 300 planes, killed more than uh, 2,000 uh, American soldiers or Navy uh, that day. And then uh, this guy got the, he heard about that in California, Army Air Corps, predecessor of the Air Force. He threw his coffee cup against the wall, broke it. He's angry. I want to go kill Japanese people. And he uh, volunteered for a secret raid, turned out to be the Doolittle do Raid, where Army Air Corps stripped down bombers, took off and attacked Japan. He did kill many Japanese people. The plan was they would crash land in China because they couldn't land back on the aircraft carriers and, and be rescued by the, the Chinese underground that were fighting the occupation forces of the Japanese. But he, that didn't happen. He was captured by the Japanese and he was put in a prison, he was put in a prison camp in Nanking. Some of you read books or seen movies about how hard, you think he hated Japanese before. He really did there. But amazing, they let him have a Bible. And he was there in this Nanking, China, in a POW camp, and he was reading the Bible. As he got to the story of the cross, Jake, he said, wow, Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And as he read the scripture, he was converted. No, no one witnessing to him, sharing the gospel, the Bible and the Holy Spirit. And he came to faith in his jail, in that, in that prison camp. And he prayed, Lord, help me to love the guards. The, the Lord worked, I'm sure he didn't do it perfectly, but the Lord was working in his heart. And as he grew as a Christian with no one discipling him, he said, Lord, if I get out of here, and you know, many, many did not. If I live and get out of here, I want to go tell this gospel to, you want to guess which country? Japan. And, and he went. And uh, he, after he lived and he went to Japan as a missionary. And one day in Tokyo, where he was living, someone came and knocked on his door. And guess who it was? It was Commander Fuchida. He had lived also through the war. And he, and he and Jake became best friends. 
He became a Christian, a pastor, and on mission with Jesus. See, this is what Jesus does. He seeks and saves lost people like this, like us, and then he puts us, he makes us new, and he put, puts us on mission. What a great, true story from the book Wounded Tiger, if you want to read about it. The, the, this is so exciting, that what Jesus does. The mission statement of Jesus, can we call verse 10 of this, of Luke, Luke 19, the mission statement of Jesus, and that it's our mission statement as well. We want to think about that together today. Let's look first at verses 1 through 5. As we see here, Jesus on mission for us from this text. I pray the first thing we see is what Jesus has done for us. He saved us. He sought us. He makes us new. And then he puts us on mission for Annapolis and for the whole world. That's what we want to think about at this missions conference. To our neighbors, to an enemy like Deshazar. And maybe during this message, you can think of your application for your neighbors, for your Annapolis, for your school, and also for the world, your part in the missions conference. So first we see Zacchaeus. He is so lost. We want to think about lost people and lost peoples. Here's a grown man climbing a tree. He's desperate. But the world would think he's happy. He's rich. And he's powerful, it says. It says that he's, verse 2, that we know the empty idolatries of wealth and success. What are, what are yours? What are the ones that we tend to go after? We know from the crowd, verse 7, he's a lonely tax collector because people hate him. They're critical when Jesus goes to his house. Jesus taught us money and possessions do not satisfy. Luke 12, 15, your life does not consist in the abundance of your possessions. But it's the message we hear every day, isn't it? That, uh, that this is what will make us happy. Our country, Japan, richest country in Asia, it's just amazing how, how wealthy it is, and yet so sad. So it looks so good on the surface. But just like here, we know from Annapolis, we know from Japan, it doesn't work. And we see Zacchaeus, his second idol may be a hint. He is the chief tax collector. He's successful. He's powerful. I think maybe that's the, the, the you know, every scripture we want to see, what is this show, where is this showing me my sin and how much I need Christ and this, this, this guy, he's climbing a tree, this grown man cr climbing a tree to see Jesus because he's, he's empty. I think for me, I was a career Marine, going to serve Christ in the unreached people group called the United States Marine Corps, you know. <laughs> and, um, and the Lord didn't know the word unreached people group then, which I'll mention later. And, uh, and as I did that, just have the best platoon, the best company, be a recon Marine. And I, I knew Christ. But I saw how much in my heart to perform and to, to be successful. And the Lord led us to seminary, rocked our world there with a Japanese friend, ended up in Japan for 35 years. And guess what? That problem never existed before. No, the same tendency to, you know, the four years of no fruit, just found myself lusting for success. And for my identity in my work. It's just so strong. Anyone know about that kind of the thing? You know, and I, I found myself just pushing myself so hard, neglected my family many times. And then the Lord began, first person came to Christ, then 13, then 50, then two services, then a president. And then I found the same, the same thing, then pride in success. And yet we see here, we see Zacchaeus, he's, he's a successful person, but he's empty. These things, are, what you know, other things that, you think how uh, raising children, I think as a father, that uh, that can be one of the places we want to be successful as a parent. And I think, you know, often we have nine children and, and you know, up to a few years ago, we'd say, our, yeah, all nine of our children, they, to, up until three years ago, they, they professed their faith in Christ. Eight of them married to, to Christians, following Jesus. I know, glory to God, but you know, Guess what I thought in my heart many times? We did a good job. Pride, you know, putting, putting, you know, good things like that, making it, my identity in these things. And I praise the Lord. And so, you know, it's so hard, the saddest thing in our life. One of our children now, after uh, just from three years ago, he was a worship leader in a PCA church, but now 
uh, not believing the gospel and, and struggling with that. And I, and I see how God has used that in my life to show me the idol of parenting and being a good parent. And how and the you know the danger and what are yours you know that all the things we might go at will they ever satisfy? Jesus that here we see Zacchaeus, joy comes to his house when Jesus comes to his house. And all of us today, whatever our tendencies are, you know, no matter what it is, looks or sports or you know uh, work, whatever it is, it's not going to work. It's junk food, right? What's Narnia? Who was eating the Turkish delight? Was uh, Edmund, right? It's, it's, is it ever enough? It's never enough. Success or money or looks or anything. The, the Olympic uh, uh, marathon runner in Tokyo in 1964, such a sad story. He, the best in the world, they thought, and the whole Japan country was waiting for him to come in first in the Olympics in Tokyo in 1964. And he came in third. Came into the stadium there, third. Third in the whole world. Third best marathoner. Third richest. Third best looking. Third most... It's so sad. I wish someone could have taught, shared with Kokichi about what we're talking about today, Jesus who seeks and saves sinners. His love isn't based on your performance <laughs> because he took his life some time later. Isn't that sad? Third in the world. It's never. If, it, if he was first, would it be enough? No. We look to Jesus. He has come into this world to seek and to save the lost. And that's that. He is our savior for sinners. Jesus, savior for sinners, seeking and saving the lost, verses five through seven. We see here Jesus, he, he uh, read it, verse five, and when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your, at your house today. Jesus seeks the loft. He's seeking sinful, selfish Zacchaeus. He, he goes right, the crowd's here, but he goes right for Zacchaeus, loving him, saving him, seeking him. Thank you, worship team. I sent what I was gonna preach on. I didn't know if they'd pick songs that, that fit. Wow, you did. Very, thank you so much. You know, he's, his love, uh, in his love, he called my name. I wrote that down as we were singing it. Yes, in his, in his love, it's the same. It's not Zacchaeus, clean yourself up first, and then I'll love you. First, it, see, this is so important in the gospel. Jesus says, I'm going to your house today before Zacchaeus does any cleaning up. We believe in our in our Reformed church, the imperative comes after the indicative. Jesus says, you come down. And uh, do we still sing that in America, that song? You know, uh, Zacchaeus was a, Zacchaeus, you come down. We, we need to translate that into Japanese because it tells the story. Jesus calls him by name. Makes me think of John 10, 3. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Particular atonement. Your worship team had that in one of the songs that I do. He calls us by name. He sought and found Zacchaeus. Do you know Christ today? Do you know him because you're smarter, more moral, better person? No. If we know Jesus today, it's because he called us by name. As in the song we sang earlier, he, is that precious to us? Or do we get used to that idea? Anybody get used to it? I do. Maybe my biggest sin, I get used to a covenant child raised to know all these things, to preach them all the time. Why, like one of my mentors, why don't I weep every time I preach about the cross? But I often cried about this story. Do you know the story of Jessica Buchanan 12 years ago, captured uh, by uh, Somalia land pirates and for 90 days abused. They moved her every two days. Uh, she was an American volunteer in her 20s serving in that country. They demanded a $40 million ransom. She had no hope. Uh, from the proof of life videos, we thought, our government thought, she was dying. She desperately needed saving. Can she save herself? 20 guys, drug craze, got 20, you know, with her rifles all around her. She cannot save herself. She desperately needs saving and rescuing from the outside. Abused, sick, dying, no more, no hope. She really thinks it's the end. 
and pitch black night, moonless night. I say, I like this story being a recon marine. Suddenly, the camp erupts in chaos. And she thinks, oh no, it's a, it's one of those other groups. They want the $40 million ransom and they're going to take me. No, I can't do this. She pins herself to her camping mat, the only possession in her name. And, and, and suddenly everything is quiet and she feels a man's hands on her back and, and, and she's fighting. She thinks it's one of the other groups. And, 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 she, and she hears suddenly, Jessica Buchanan, we're taking you home in the middle of the Somalia desert in perfect English. And she looks up, says, SEAL team, six guys. Hey, is this a good story in Annapolis, Maryland? You know? <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and, and, and she just... She tells the story. She's so hurt. She couldn't tell the story for a couple of years, you know, the, all the trauma and everything. And, but later on, you go to 60 Minutes, you can see a good 20-minute version. And she says, uh, you know, who are you? How did you get here? You know? But he picked her up, threw her on his back, running through the, to the desert where the helicopter was going to come in to take them away. She said, these guys, they, they, you know, I didn't even know who they were. They put a perimeter around my, around me. Three of them put their bodies across the top of mine to pr protect me from bullets when they thought there was danger. They waited till the helicopter was gone before they left. And, but she said, and they called me by name. Isn't that something? They called me by name. And then she thought, how did they know my name? And then she found out the president knew her name and sent them, you know? Is that a good rescue? Who likes that rescue story? Who doesn't like it? My, my wife always tells me, uh, don't tell that story again. So you'd give me feedback. Is that a good, I think that's a good story to tell. But anybody know a better rescue story? Hello? Why are we here today? We sang about it. The Son of Man came not all the way on a long plane trip, parachuting in and coming through the night. Jesus, the eternal Son of God, took on flesh, came, lived the perfect life in our place, died on the cross for us. Our rescue story is better. I know the Baptist church is next door, but can we say amen to that? Amen. Yes. How much more does the Son of God loves us? And how thankful, how much do you think Jessica Buchanan thought about her rescue that whole next day in the hospital in Italy? How, how often do you think she thought about it? Could she not think about it? Every second she thought she was going to die. You know, how about us? Why do we gather for worship? Why do we go to our small groups? Why do we take time in our homes to read our Bibles? Because it fades, doesn't it? How do you think now, 12 years ago, how, 12 years later now, how often do you think she thinks about it? I always wondered, I, I bet when her husband joined her in that uh, Italy hospital, I bet they didn't have any fights that day. Or conflict. I'm sure no one here has those. My wife and I are both strong-willed. We have lots of them, you know. I bet they had none. I bet even the next day. I bet it was a while before they had some fun because they were so full of thanks, right? And we see Zacchaeus in the story. Zacchaeus is so moved. Are we moved? The point, are we moved by our rescue? Jesus, work in us. That, that, this comes kind of before we go on mission, that we need to know this, and, and it's concurrent. Yes, that he saved us. We, we see the crowd in verse 7. A Japanese pastor helped me see that, growing up in a covenant family. I'd never seen this. Verse 7 is connected to verse 8. Verse 8, we see Zacchaeus is new. Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I've defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. This proud, wealth, idol, junkie changes. But verse 7 is one more hint of what happened to him. Japanese pastor helped me see this. Zacchaeus in verse 7, when the crowd, the self-righteous crowd, that's a whole wish we could talk about that a little bit. When they saw it, they all grumbled, he has gone to be the guest of of a man who is a sinner. Zacchaeus sees the love of Jesus taking the scorn of the crowd, taking the shame of the crowd, 
and goes to, makes a beeline for his house to bring joy to his house. That, Jesus, and we know more than Zacchaeus about this. Jesus taking our shame, taking our guilt on the cross. It, it, it precedes his shame. It's one of the things about being new in Jesus when we see that we change and we go on mission. Look, the next point, on mission with Jesus. And this is the, a mission conference. It took a long time to, for us to think about how Jesus came on mission for us. You believe that? Isn't that one, what good news? But he calls us, like Deshazar, in that Nanking prisoner of war camp, without anyone telling him, as he reads the Bible and the Holy Spirit's work, I want to go to Japan. These people that are treating me so bad, I want to go there and tell them this good news. We are loved. We are sought. We're found. We're saved. We're made new in Christ and sent on mission with Jesus to a lost world. This, this, we see this all through the Bible, all through the gospel. Jesus said, Matthew 4, 19, come follow me. I want you to fill it in the rest, okay? Come follow me and I will make you, okay? And John 4, the woman at the well. She can't help but tell people, right? She goes back and says, come and see. Come to see, meet this man that told me everything. And then she, all the, verse 39 of chapter of John 4, all these Samaritans in that town believed because of this woman's testimony. This is, this is what we do. John 20, 21, Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Here I am. So today we say, Lord, to my neighbor, how about hospitality? You know, as a, as a pastor's kid, PCA pastor's kid, I believe more people came to know Christ in our home with my mom and dad's hospitality. And we saw the same thing in Japan, more than at church, you know. Going, taking the good news to our kids, being sent to the bank to send Emily so she can get to, she can get to Germany to be in that school in time for the new school year. We could take care of that today probably, right here, you know, or at least a whole bunch of it. And it's not just, you know, we're called to be a part of this. Acts 1.8, the Holy Spirit, when he's given, he makes us witnesses where? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Just think about, think about that. Cordell Stone was a guy sitting in a missions conference like this, falling asleep because it was boring, has no, no relation to me, he thought, owned his own construction company, and uh, carpenter, loved the Lord, but missions, not, not for me. And he heard, a, so a guy gave a testimony that yes, I'm not very good talker, but I, I'm good with my hands, and I started going on these trips to build school buildings and homes for orphans and church buildings, and Cordell woke up. <laughs> And he went and talked to the guy after. He came and built our first church building in Japan. And God used him. He's on the second floor building it with his wife, the second floor of our first church building for our team. And a couple comes walking by and he invites him to come up the ladder and come upstairs. Turned out that guy was, uh, was the uh, chief of staff of a Japanese senator from our area. I didn't know this. I wasn't there that day. And after, about a year and a half later, after, uh, yes, we had five people that were Christians now and 30 non-Christians. We started worship, you know, and, uh, and then up, probably two years, of probably 50 or 60 people there now. And this couple comes up to me, first time there, Mr. and Mrs. Watanabe. It was that couple. They told me about Cordell's. They said, yeah, we were standing right about here. And he gave us some coffee, I think it went, I forget all the details, but they were so moved. You came from America to come build this building? You know, how God used Cordell and his wife and their gifts, what they're good at. How is God calling you to be a part of this here in your Jerusalem and to the ends of the earth? You know, we all know 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I you know, memorized it as a kid. If anyone's in Christ, they're a new creation. Old things are passed away. New things have come to pass, you know. But we don't usually think about it in terms of mission. When I was in college, and I, yes, as I really came to faith, second year of college, began to grow as a Christian, 
wanted to be holy, wanted to read my Bible, wanted to, you know, uh, wanted to be sexually pure. I said, Lord, help. I, my want to changed as, that, as, as God worked in my heart. But I had never, it was more recently that I see the context. What's our first rule of interpreting scripture? Let scripture interpret scripture. And what are the verses about if you go to the next one? The, the context is mission. New in Christ to be on mission, yes or no. Now, of course, sanctification and other, we're new in Christ for all of that. But friends, the context is mission. All this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself. Would you read the rest with me? And gave the ministry, the, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Yes, and the, and the next verse is the same. He, Paul repeats himself in verse 19. Says it again, that is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against him. There's our rescue story. Again, read it with me. And entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Do you agree? Am I interpreting the scripture rightly? That these go together. You know, it's been said more than God's church also has a mission. We kind of tack it on. No, I think you prayed this somewhere this weekend. God's church also has a mission. No, it's more like this. God's mission also has a church. He calls us. The fire exists by burning, someone said. And the church exists by mission. We go and do It's part of who we are. So practical application today. What is my response? What's your response to Jesus? He came, he died on the cross, he rose again. We know way more than Zacchaeus knew. We're thankful that he rescued. Lord, thank you that you rescued me. Take me. I'm yours. You know, maybe today your, your application is to believe in Jesus and say, take me. I'm yours, Jesus. Maybe a, a Christian family kid, maybe one of you kids here, like me, growing up in a church like this and not really believing, maybe. You know, maybe today's your day. Maybe you're an adult who you know, you're playing church or whatever. Maybe today is to say, Jesus, take me. I'm here. You know, did, did uh, Jessica Buchanan, don't tell my wife I'm using that story again, okay? Uh, uh, but, you know, did she didn't when, when that SEAL Team 6 guy says, uh, you know, Jessica Buchanan, we're taking you home. She didn't say, wait a second, uh, how did you get here? Uh, yeah, is, is, how, how many hours does the helicopter pilot have? Uh, you know, how, t now tell me again, how did you find me here in the middle? Did, did she ask any questions? My, I remember my dad always telling me, you know, when you're drowning, you don't ask for a book on how to swim. Give me the life preserver, you know. Yes, maybe today is your day to say, Jesus, take me, I'm yours, I've been playing with you. We're saved by faith alone. He, we just, he, 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 come, he takes us, he rescues, he throws us and takes us to the, to the rescue. But also a heart for lost people and for lost peoples is one of our applications. Is there something you need to write down? We're all different. Age, gifting, men and women. My wife would really be mad. I'm gonna use that Jessica Buchanan story again. And I, I used it a month ago in Augusta, Georgia. And how many people, how many here, military of some kind of background, Marine, Navy, a lot of Navy probably, Army, Air Force, whatever, okay, a lot of, lot of people. How many people did it take to pull off that rescue? Was it 15 Navy SEALs, pilots, air crewmen, the people who were looking at the satellites that were tracking her as they moved her every two days. Would you say the SEAL Team 6 guys were pretty different than the guys on the computers tracking her from the satellite? What do you think, everybody? Pretty different gifts, very, very different. And it took all of them, and that is a great illustration of who we are. I, you know, I asked that how many, you know, uh, an army guy a month ago when I used that illustration at the door, he said, 2,300. He said, <laughs> you know, and he, he started, hey, you don't need to tell me the detail. He had added, you should have been listening to the rest of the sermon, you know, <laughs> adding it up. 
as we think about this, you know, for reaching our Annapolis, because it's not just, you know, Annapolis, Maryland, the, 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 our whole country, our lost country, because America's pretty lost, really lost. I mean, to me, coming back from Japan, I think America's pretty reached, but yeah, hey, your city, how many of you came to Christ in this church, in this, in, a, in EP church, and were baptized as adults in this church? Raise your hand. As adults, not as covenant children. How many? Okay, a, f- a, f- a few. Yesterday in the morning, there was, there was one. How, now, what does that tell us? That tells us, one thing, how Christianized America is. Does it also tell us what our, does anyone think it's one out of however many hundreds are here, or three out of, how, that that's about the percentage of, uh, of lost people in Annapolis? Yes or no? <laughs> yeah, Lord, what is my application for reaching my city? through, you know, inviting my neighbors to my house and going to serve somewhere in town, you know, serving somewhere and, and, and a bunch of Christians showing up to serve. And, you know, and I, we found in Japan, I found that once people knew it from our black gospel singing group, English classes, coming to our home, I could ask this question once I had a good relationship. How would you like to study the world's bestseller with me six times? World's bestseller is Bible. And guess what? You know, almost every single person, resistant, hardcore, Japanese, man, everyone, they said yes. I tried, we moved back to America to take care of grandma and grandpa and my dad uh, two years ago. And asked my next door neighbor after we had in our home, different built a relationship, said, uh, how'd you like to study the Bible together? Six times. Guess what he said? Yes. <laughs> And the guy across it, listen, let's talk to the guy across the street. Said, how would you like to study the Bible six times together? Guess what he said? Yes. Do you know anyone in the world that doesn't want to be loved and sought after? You know, what's our application for our neighbors, for Annapolis, but also for the whole world, all peoples, the S. I thought that was bad English, peoples. I left the Marine Corps, went to seminary. I was a missing S Christian. I had the people, people groups. I had missed that. You know, my dad and grandpa I thought they discipled us pretty well, but, you know, I don't remember that. Talking about those places that have nothing. Jesus, you know, in Luke 15 saying, leaving the 99 and going after the one. There's so many places like that in the world. Maybe some of you today, like Emily from your church, saying, you know, I could go. There's a, a, a lady, almost 70, came to join our team in Japan. Many years ago, her husband had died, elder in a PCA church in Florida, and she heard at a missions conference, be careful of missions conferences, you know. She said, uh, I think I could go help teach those English classes. And she did. She served so faithfully. Anne Marie Ward. She's like grandma to our whole team with all of our kids on our team. And after it came, came to about eight months, she said, I have never shared the gospel with this many people in my whole life. Can I get, go home for the summer and come back next year too? She said, yes, you can. She was great. She ended up staying four years. You know? We've seen that kind of thing. The Drew's sitting right here, Naval Academy graduate. He and his, they came to Japan for three weeks, turned into three years, turned into 10 years. Maybe I shouldn't tell you that. You know? You'll uh, be hesitant. But yeah, where is the best, safest, most joyful place to be in the world for you and for me? Where God leads us to be, right? Whether it's here or there. Or where. It's the best place for our kids, Everything for Emily going. Praise the Lord, Emily's going. Maybe some others here today say, you know, mission, chairman, pastor. I want to think about that. How could God use me in my retired years or a young person like that? There are a lot of people don't support Christian schools around the world. There's missionaries in Japan. We know how much we needed people to come and help us with our kids' education by our giving. You know, there was a young lady, Kimiko, came to Christ in our church, and, and she would come to our house Tuesday nights, and we, I was reading during family devotion. I wanted my kids to be thankful for all of our supporters who sent us to Japan. And so I was reading one of these old printouts that we used to get, you know, green and white with, with holes down the side. You, those might, you know, some of you have never seen those before. And I was going through them, you know, reading the names of these 22 churches, 
And these 50 Christians, who so many, you know, now 38 years now, never missed a month, you know? Just being a part of what we're doing in Japan. I read all the names, and, and after family worship, Kimiko comes over and says, Don san, misete kudasai. Dan, show me that. Said, you mean all these people in churches, they give to send you here to Oyumino to, to, to start our church, to lead me? You and Carol and the kids couldn't have come if it wasn't for these people. I, you know, I didn't say this, but I wanted to say, Kimiko, what do you think? There's some big bank that supports all this, you know? <laughs> no. No, because, right, the Jessica Buchanan, so all the gifts are needed. What's God calling you to do to be a part of this? Praying, you know, we have a, one time we were so, four times we were ready to give up. hundred times we had, you know, wanted to quit, kind of. There were four times, I mean, we were close to quitting. It was so hard. The beginning and the middle and at the end. So hard. And, uh, and we wrote that one of our good friends, actually Navy dentist's wife, that we knew at Camp Lejeune in our Officers Christian Fellowship group, who became supporters still through today, never missed a month supporting financially. But I'm more thankful for this. Bitsy, she wrote us back, said, I'm getting up 30 minutes earlier every morning to pray for you guys. And the Lord heard her prayers, got us through, and we... We're able to keep going by his grace. What's God calling you to do? I'm going to give your mission chairman some prayer. A bunch of us, Paul Minor and Liz, that you got your church knows, we are starting some Zoom prayer meetings for the PCA because it's hard to pray. I think it's the hardest thing maybe to come online for 30 minutes. Can you commit as a mission conference application? If one of those fits, I will come on and pray with people leading us in prayer for 30 minutes to be a part of the long range naval gunfire, the, uh, you know, the, the, the airstrikes for the, this kingdom advancement that we're doing. Last, uh, last story, Peggy Koval, this young lady here, she um, grew up as a missionary kid in Japan. And uh, do you think she's pretty unlikely person to lead Commander Fuchida to Christ? in her 20s, but she grew up as a kid, knew Japanese well, and her family fled Japan, 1939, when the war drums are beating, and they were missionaries in Yokohama. They fled to the Philippines. She came back to America to go to college, like all of our nine kids did, and she gets the word that when Japan invaded the Philippines, her family had, her mom and dad had fled to the mountains, the Japanese soldiers found her mom and dad and they killed her mom and dad. And of course, she's, of course, so heartbroken. And, you know, so she had loved Japan as a kid, grew up there with all these friends in Japan and here's this war. And, 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 she, and toward the end of the war, she gets, there, she's an East Coast person, this advertisement saying, we need Japanese speakers to come to the West Coast to be interpreters for Japanese soldiers that are in our POW hospitals. Guess who volunteers to serve Japanese soldiers of the army who had killed her parents? Peggy. This is counterintuitive. No, this is gospel intuitive, right? This is, this is what we do. She gets on a train, goes to the West Coast, and one of the soldiers she served, they, you know, this book, the book, that Wounded Tiger book, talks about how she, you know, made Japanese food for them and didn't tell at first that their soldiers had killed her parents, but then she did. And one of those soldiers was Commander Fuchida's mechanic. And after the war, he's repatriated, and of course he, you know, this is amazing, this young lady in her 20s, and she's serving us. And he found his Commander Fuchida and what a story, you know. <laughs> and one day, Fuchida knocks on Jake DeShazer's door in Tokyo. Friends, we're all part of this, young, old. We're, what is God calling us to do to be a part of this, the great endeavor? For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Let's pray. Lord, 
we thank you that as you sent Jesus, you send us out into this lost world to our next door neighbors, to our kids, to our grandkids. Would you show us more of your love and grace to us? You've called us by name. Lord, may we not forget. May we remember well this gospel. And Lord, may we, yes, go on mission with you, Jesus, as you use us to take the good news to Annapolis and to the end of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, brother. We've heard three distinct but deeply related calls to each of us. Jesus' mission statement to seek and save the lost, he's entrusted it to us. And I want to ask you to consider deeply today, to make a deep matter of prayer of what your response will be, what all of our responses will be. There is a call to pray. That's been entrusted, Jesus said. You know, the fields are white unto harvest. Pray the Lord of the harvest to raise up those that will go out and take it. So every one of us is called to pray. The call to give, to support, every one of us is able to be a part of this. And the call to go is for each of us, but it depends on where God's called us to be, but are we open to going wherever he'd have us be? So I really want you as you leave today to be thinking of praying, giving, going. This is, if I'm God's child, this is what my father's entrusted to me. This is what my brother, my big brother Jesus has left with me. Would you stand?
receive this good word from the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his presence upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Go in his peace.